And now it's time for story time with Kirk Cameron. We're the drag queens. So, Kirk, you've been touring the country doing, we, you call it Brave Story Hours? Is Brave that, Story Brave Hours, story that's hours. right. And you're reading your new book, As You Grow. Oh, Brave, because it's Brave Books. I get it. Yeah, that's yeah. the publisher, Brave Books. Publisher, yes. And uh, we, we actually covered this at the Babylon Bee. The library kids were excited to hear uh, a story read by mysterious new drag queen, Kirk Dazzle Glamoroni. <laughs> <laughs> There's an actual picture of you in drag. Not photoshopped. You know, photoshopped I all. didn't want that photo to get out. <laughs> you found it. <laughs> but that's great. So what's your new book about? Why read it at libraries? What's the response been? Let's talk about them. So I... I, I wrote this new children's book, and it's it's all about teaching kids biblical wisdom and the fruit of the Spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. And I wanted to read it at public libraries because story hours are all the rage now. And I was denied by over 50 woke libraries that previously held drag queen story hours. That's so crazy. <laughs> so if you want to read about wokeness uh, as a man uh, with a beard in fishnet stockings and heels to little toddlers about gender and sexuality and other topics uh, that come on. But if it's about love, joy, kindness, and loving God, it's a hard no. And what we did was push back on this because we figured that would be the response from these libraries. And we wrote a letter. I gave them a free copy of the book and said, uh, I, I think you'll agree these are the values we want for all of our kids. But if you persist in the discrimination because of my sincerely held viewpoint mm -hmm. about loving God and others, uh, I'm prepared to exercise my constitutional rights. And we immediately got emails with links to sign up for story hours at these libraries. And when we went to Indianapolis, which was the first one, uh, who said that our community is not interested in your messaging, we had over 2,500 wow. parents and children show up and overwhelm that library on all six floors out the front door and down the street. And it was uh, a similar response in Scarsdale, New York, and then also in Nashville and Fayetteville and uh, Los Angeles and other places where they said uh, their messaging at that library and my messaging were not aligned. Uh, not true according to the citizens of those cities. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I could kind of understand if, I mean, not that it would be a good thing, but if they just didn't allow people to come in with outside beliefs or whatever to come into these libraries, it'd be one thing. Like, we just, well, we just don't have people do that. Like, we have our own people do the library thing. But the fact that they allowed drag queens to do it, and then they were like, oh, you're, you, you know, you're this guy that's coming in, and you're a Christian or whatever. You yeah. Know, it's, it's so bizarre that that, that point of... Well, it, and one of the interesting things that happened during this this tour, and we're going to about 15, 20 cities uh, to those public libraries uh, before uh, July, uh, because we've got a big deal coming up in July. Um, we were in Fayetteville, Tennessee, and we went there and had about 800 moms and dads and kids standing out in the rain and the cold with umbrellas waiting to get in. We were gathered around the flag outside the library singing the national anthem and God bless America. We were praying in Jesus' name and we were talking about solutions to the nation's problems. And the librarian inside was so against us being there that when we finally got in to do our work, he was kicking cabinets and having his staff play loud music and dropping books so that we couldn't continue and wow. this so exactly upset... the opposite of what a librarian is supposed to do. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to you're supposed to be quiet. Shh. And, and he said like we weren't even supposed to be there. More noise, more noise. And you know, the community <laughs> got together to get uh, together with the board of directors at the library and fired him. Wow. And so that demonstrated to us once again that the perception that we're uh, being told to swallow, that libraries are woke, public schools are woke, everybody wants this stuff, and that Christianity belongs in, in, a, in a ghetto margin somewhere, is not true. There's millions of people out there that are saying, no, these are the values that we know lead to our blessing. And That's had, a fantastic point, because I think they're doing that not just at libraries and schools, but the culture as a whole. In every aspect of society, they're trying to push these woke values. This is what America's shifting to. Sure. This is what is important Doesn't that now. sound like propaganda? And it doesn't seem... An elite it is few yeah. pushing a message so consistently and so loudly mm -hmm. that most people who just want to go along to get along and not get in trouble believe what they're told from authority figures. Uh, that's why it's important we have a higher authority than the media and the government, and that is the Word of God. Amen. Yeah, and we'll talk about that a little bit later with like 
Dylan Mulvaney and the Bud Light yeah. stuff. But that's one of those things. It feels so inorganic. Like somebody's just like, this is your new role yes. model. You know? Yeah, <laughs> so these yeah are when our Dylan values. Mulvaney <laughs> popped up, I'd, I'd never heard anyone who was a fan of that first. <laughs> right. I ne- it was immediately being pushed and, you know, these companies partnering with. Right. Th- these are interesting pictures, right? Th- these, uh, they look like drag nuns, mm-hmm. right? Like like the monsters uh, in drag. And some of them, I think they were from a group called the Hillbilly Harlots. Oh, and they were there sort of blocking wholesome. the kids' views and holding up these signs about Christian hate and, and stuff like that. But the parents actually turned it all around. Many of them were homeschoolers, and they used this as an object lesson for their kids to demonstrate the difference between light and dark, between, like, truth and error. You know that devil we teach you about? <laughs> like, <in their> point. <laughs> Here we go. You should bring little awards, like, for best costume that you just give out to the protesters. <laughs> See, I, that's, I need you guys there with me on this library tour. Oh, you win, down, you win best costume. Let us know. Babylon B and uh, Kirk Cameron doing yeah. a, a story. Let's out. go, baby. I would be totally down. Yeah, so we got these pictures. You can check them out if you're on the video feed there. Uh, are you going to keep doing this? What's Yes. What's you? Yeah, we're going to keep doing this. We were just in New York City, and we were just in Washington, D.C., um, uh, very interesting. There were still families showing up at these libraries, even though in D.C. we were there the day before Trans Day of Vengeance. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you heard about that. Yeah. But that, together with the tragic shooting in Nashville uh, by that shooter, and um, you know, we'll see what that manifesto says, but these Christians that are being targeted for, mm-hmm. for their beliefs and uh, together with all of this trans anger... Uh, we're, we're in a difficult spot, but parents understand this is our moment as the family of faith to demonstrate what courage and hope looks like and engage a culture by standing for what's right. And I'm, I've really been inspired by them. And apart from the libraries that are, uh, you know, opposed to this and resist it, have you found, I sure have found a lot of libraries that are excited to have you oh, there yeah. and welcome you? Oh yeah, there's that's tons awesome. of people. Yeah. Tons, tons are saying, come to our library, yeah. come to our library, we want, oh, you, we want you here. And it's interesting that People will say that, but then sometimes the leadership in those libraries will still oppose it. Mm-hmm. And again, that, that's highlighting the need that we have to engage culturally, not just say, well, we, we love libraries, but we need to be involved in preserving our libraries and guiding and directing our libraries by getting involved in the leadership positions. Yeah, because a lot of these people that are graduating with woke, you know, liberal arts degrees from woke colleges, and then that's the jobs that they kind of gravitate towards. Yeah. You know, and we don't really... Community organizing yeah, and that kind and, of stuff. and that kind of stuff. Well, we're busy raising children we and trying to work, and we want to. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's not something that that we conservatives or Christians tend to tend to gravitate towards. So we used to, I think, too. in culture, but we've we've gotten further and further away from that. Well, Kirk, uh, it looks like you're doing a great job out there. And uh, anybody that sees a Kirk story hour, go check it out. Are you a purveyor of fine goods and a patron of quality entertainment? If so, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment to support the fine institution known as the Babylon Bear. And if you don't subscribe, you must be one of those unfortunates who can't even afford an in-house sommelier. Uh, speaking of which, Reginald, bring the 1906 Salle-moi-Qu'est-ce-que-tu-chasseur. 